Hi people, Apple is trying to make waves in the gaming world, showcasing exciting new titles like Assassin's Creed, Resident Evil, Prince of Persia, and more coming to Mac while introducing the powerhouse Mac Mini equipped with the M4 chip. This compact machine packs the capabilities of a full desktop PC into a device that fits comfortably in your palm and connects seamlessly to your monitor or TV for an immersive gaming experience. Does that remind you of anything? Perhaps the powerful consoles of PlayStation and Xbox? Apple is boldly stepping into the gaming arena, channeling the same innovation that has defined its tech empire. But the big question remains, is Apple ready to take on the giants of the gaming industry? The latest announcements for the Mac Mini and MacBook Pro highlighted a significant focus on gaming, a trend we've seen intensifying over the past two years. With the Apple TV performance hitting new heights and the iPhone reigning supreme in mobile gaming, it's worth considering. What does the future hold for high-end PC gaming on Apple devices? All right, let's dive into Apple's latest M4 chips, built on an ultra-compact 3 nanometers process. This means better energy efficiency and cooler temps, so your Mac can game for hours without turning into a heater. The M4 Pro and M4 Max bring serious power with up to 14-core and 16-core CPUs, claiming to be the fastest for single-threaded tasks. And with up to 40 GPU cores in the M4 Max, these chips double ray tracing performance, delivering stunningly realistic lighting, shadows, and reflections for immersive gameplay without dropping frame rates. Memory bandwidth? We're talking up to 273GB per second on the Pro and 546GB per second on the Max. Enough to load massive textures and game assets smoothly, keeping stutters out of open world and AAA titles. And with Thunderbolt 5 at 120 gigabits per second, you can connect high-speed peripherals, external GPUs, or storage seamlessly, cutting load times and expanding your gaming setup. So in nutshell, M4 provides like 15 to 20% improvement on M3, which is less but still very respectable and a level up to already state-of-the-art M3. The M series, Apple's ARM-based powerhouse, brought big wins in power efficiency and GPU performance. But when it comes to gaming, particularly those AAA, graphically demanding PC titles, things get a bit tricky. Apple's latest tool for developers, the Game Porting Toolkit, introduced in 2023, is here to help run games on Mac. Think of it as a translator that combines Wine's emulator tech with Apple's own Direct 3D to Metal System. In short, it helps developers see how DirectX 11 and 12 games might perform on Mac OS. But here's the kicker, it's not for end users. So no, you can't just plug in your favorite Windows game and go to town yet. Now, if developers want to bring a PC game to Mac OS, it's not a quick copy-paste job. Converting a complex game to work smoothly with Apple's Metal Graphics API can take a whopping one to two years. And even if they do manage it, where are gamers going to find these titles? Unlike Steam, Mac OS doesn't have a central gaming hub, which doesn't exactly scream developer-friendly. But there is a glimmer of hope. The open-source parts of this toolkit have sparked some cool projects, like Crossover by Codeweavers. They're working on solutions that could actually help some of these games run on Mac OS. But until Apple gives us a truly seamless way to game on a Mac, we'll be left in limbo. Apple's M4 chip is undeniably powerful, but its GPU capabilities still compare to that of a mid-range Windows PCs. YouTubers have compared the gaming experience on MacBook M2 chips to PC, and the results are the same. M3 Pro can also give respectable frame rates on AAA games like Resident Evil, No Man's Sky, Final Fantasy VII, God of War, Overwatch 2, Cyberpunk 2077, but it falls short against dedicated gaming GPUs like Nvidia's RTX 4060. For instance, Benchmarks show the RTX 4060 laptop achieving up to 2.1 times higher FPS in the GFX Bench 5.0 Aztec Ruins test and an 80% higher score in GPU compute tasks, thanks to features like NVIDIA's DLSS 3. The RTX 4060 can hit up to 14.6 teraflops, more than triple the M4's 4.6 teraflops, and its superior memory bandwidth and ray tracing cores make a notable difference in rendering and graphical intensity, taking a two-pronged approach in this domain. So, what is Apple trying to do, and can they actually pull it off? The technology and R&D capabilities at Apple are top-notch, but the high GPU standards and benchmarks in the well-established gaming industry make the M chips look a bit dull, despite their cutting-edge architecture and efficiency. There's a lack of incentives for developers to migrate to Mac OS, and the high costs and long timelines for porting games present significant challenges. Apple has cultivated an image of being the go-to choice for creative professionals, who have resigned themselves to the fact that their laptops are not gaming consoles. This makes it difficult for studios and developers to gauge the gaming potential in the existing MacBook owner market. Alternatively, Apple could take a page from the Cash God playbook and acquire gaming studios or IP rights for big titles to shift market trends in their favor. This is exactly what they are trying to do with the Apple Arcade subscription model and deals for AAA games. However, it's still a long road ahead for Apple to establish a serious foothold in the gaming market. As we close today's dive into Apple's gaming ambitions, it's clear they're making bold moves with the M4 chip and a growing game library. But will they challenge the likes of PlayStation and Xbox? For us developers and tech enthusiasts, these shifts present exciting opportunities for innovation. Stay tuned for more insights, and don't forget to subscribe for Bite Size Dose of Tech. Until next time, keep coding and pushing the boundaries of technology.